Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, we tend to take for granted how hard it is to re-enter day-to-day life, especially when you've been off doing something extreme and almost otherworldly, like fighting in a war. And if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And, you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you do. Uh, you can subscribe. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Give us the old five-star rating. Hit the like and give us a subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We're pretty much everywhere. We're over at Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. Pretty much all platforms. And plus, we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook, we're on the Twitter, and we're on the Instagram at where else. We're at In The Seats. For all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because, you know, if we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we just love it when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please, do us a kindness and pay us a visit. On this episode, we got a good one. It is uh, an excellent film that uh, debuted at the Toronto International Film Festival, and it is now available today on the Apple TV Plus streaming service. It is called Causewave, starring the one and only Jennifer Lawrence. And it's a, well, it's a hard film, but it's a, it's an honest one. I mean, I felt so anyway. It's a story of a U.S. soldier, played by Lawrence, who suffers a traumatic brain injury while working and fighting in Afghanistan and struggles to adjust to her life back home. It's... It's really a fantastic character piece and just sort of the challenges on how to restart your life and begin again. And uh, it's a it's a really great piece of work and everyone in it obviously should be very proud. But uh, especially uh, its director, Dr. Uh, uh, Leela Neubauer, who we had the unique pleasure of sitting down and talking with while she was here in Toronto for the festival. And talked about, we just talked about her getting the script and working with Jennifer and sort of the complexities of emotion that had to be played in this film and, and, and how it's a film that plays really with subtle beats and not sort of any sort of dramatic, you know, tropes or overtures. It's a very, the honesty in the film is incredibly earned. And I think that's what makes it so poignant. But, uh, if you don't already have Apple TV Plus, we uh, we've been screaming its praises for God knows how long now. Go sign up; it is uh, probably one of the better streaming services out there right now. But uh, you know, do that, watch Causeway. But first, enjoy uh, our conversation with director Leela Neubauer because between you and me, it's a pretty good one. Now, obviously, first off, just thank you so much for the time today. Oh, thank you. I mean, and congrats on the film. I mean, thank I you. absolutely loved it. I oh, mean, good. I guess. Walk me through sort of the origin of this script sure. sort of coming into your, in, onto your desk, into your universe. Happily. Um, thank you for your kind words on the film. Um, so for the last 15 years, I have primarily been a theater director. Mm. Um, so this story begins for me in this early spring of 2019. I was directing a Broadway revival of Kenneth Lonergan's play, The Waverly Gallery. We had just opened. And one of the producers on that project handed me a script, which was the original screenplay of this film. And um, I was immediately very taken with it, um, very moved. And um, serendipitously enough, I found out that a couple of weeks later, Jennifer Lawrence read the script and had a similar response. And then only about a week after that, she and I had dinner and the immediacy with which we aligned creatively on what drew us to the material and the alignment that I think we felt with one another (laughs) um, became the undeniable basis from which a creative partnership began to be forged. And we were in production only a few months later. Fantastic. Yeah. (laughs) And I mean, it's one of those things, I mean, in watching this film, I mean, We've had pre- other films in the past, obviously, that have dealt with similar subject matter. Mm. 
But this film didn't sort of force any sort of flourishes on us. Mm. It was all very sort of natural and very real. How important was it for you to give a very sort of understated but very mm. emotional tone to the material? I love that that's how you experienced it. Um, you know, I, uh, I had the remarkable privilege during the development of the script on this project and prep while shooting and all the way through post of consulting heavily with um, veteran affairs medical professionals veterans and members of the US Armed Forces service members. Um, so in terms of my approach to the subject matter, <laughs> um, I would say that um, it was apparent to me from the outset that I would not and could not make this film without meaningfully consulting with people who had lived it. For sure. Um, I would say those conversations formed the kind of bedrock <laughs> of my convictions about the film. And um, it felt important to me to approach the subject matter and to handle these particular characters, both of them, all of them, with a care yeah. and a sensitivity and also uh, patience. And I mean, visually even, it wasn't, it felt very, I mean, I don't want to, ordinary is the wrong word, but it felt human. It felt like life. Good. Like, was for you when you're trying to put together a film, obviously, from a visual standpoint, was that important for you to not make it feel like a set, make it feel genuine? It was. Um, uh, I collaborated with two astonishingly gifted artists on this film in our director of photography, Diego Garcia, and our production designer, Jack Fisk. And both of them, um, uh, the collaboration with both was wildly joyful. And I think um, something they share is an awareness that um, what you put into a frame <laughs> is communicating cerebrally, emotionally, viscerally, and also at the level of the unconscious. I think they also both have an awareness that a seemingly simple image <laughs> can hold a great depth of feeling and a great deal of psychological information for sure if it's composed intentionally yeah now i mean obviously in a film like this you've got to have two leads who can sort of carry the weight and i mean and jennifer and brian have such a have a great such a great back and forth i mean how do you sort of engender that trust with your actors to sort of get to a space where you know it's such a great performance because it doesn't feel like they're acting it just feels like they're being. I love everything you have to say about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is great. Um, well, um, I've known Brian since I was 19. Okay. Um, uh, I was in undergrad when he was in grad school at drama school. So I've, he's an old friend and I've known for a long time that he is an actor of singular depth, range, magnetism, humanity, um, as an actor and as a person also. Um, and Jen, upon first meeting her, one of the um, remarkable aspects of first encountering her is that um, she is an open book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, there's, there are no obstacles. Um, she is completely present <laughs> and she just wants to get in there with you. They are both like that. And I had a suspicion that they would be a good fit. <laughs> and from our very first day all assembled, it was deeply apparent that their chemistry was uh, quite rare, singular, and their depth of connection to the material, to their characters in their lives, and to one another as actors and as people, uh, I think has been hugely vital to making the movie what it is. No, I'm curious for you, because I mean, something that I really pulled from the film is just because Obviously, when issues of trauma come up, there it always feels like, oh, this is what you do. There's a rule book. You have to follow this, and then you'll do better. But in the reality, there is no rule book. There are no rules. How yes. important was it for you to sort of put that out there that everyone's experience when it comes to dealing with issues like this are going to be completely different and completely unique? Just completely love what you're saying. <laughs> um, you know, um, I'm endlessly fascinated by how we actually change. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how we begin to heal. I'm endlessly fascinated by the way in which the obstacles to what we might call progress are often external, but also often internal. <laughs> and 
much of the time, we have to begin to reckon with the internal obstacles and limitations before we can make any kind of step forward. Yeah. Those internal obstacles, um, there are through lines, I suspect, <laughs> as we all attempt to grow and change, but they are singular to the ex lived experience of the person. Um, so, um, you know, uh, that that's a journey that I was interested in charting uh, with two very specific human beings yeah. in this film. Yeah. Now I'm curious, does, how does you as a theater director mm -hmm. be informed by you as a filmmaker? Ah, like, do they, the do they do they talk to each other? Do they oh yeah, connect? yeah. I mean, you know, the structure of the process in yeah. filmmaking and in theater production is radically dissimilar. It's almost opposite. Yeah. But the core impulses are one of the most joyful discoveries of this process was how aligned those impulses are, how shared. Um, the core storytelling impulse, uh, the primacy of visual composition, the centrality of the conversation with the actor, for me at least. Um, so I think that for me, uh, as my hope is to continue to work in a diverse ecology of mediums, I think um, uh, all the streams feel like they're talking to each other, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is there a difference between one or the other that maybe audiences or people wouldn't expect that there are? They wouldn't, well, I don't know what they wouldn't expect. I mean, maybe it's, it's to me, theater yeah. for me, among many things, is the invention of temporary spontaneous community. Right. Night after night. Film is capturing lightning in a bottle and freezing it in time. Right. <laughs> so the role that time has to play in those mediums <laughs> um, is, is radically, it's radically different. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a wild thing. I mean, just to put a bow on this, because I'm always fascinated on sort of the transition between theater and film. I mean, for you going forward, is there a preference? Is there a hope? Or is it just a question of trying to sort of explore what you can in both mediums? Oh, I, I am, uh, am I, I mean, in the, I, am, I am doing a play later this year and I have a movie in early stage development and I have two television projects that I'm developing. So, um, it's very much my active wish to continue to work in all mediums. Um, and um, yeah, I, I would like to, I would like to keep doing it all. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see them all. Thank you. Because I mean, I Thank have you. to give you more, I have to come Thank back you. and interview you again. I would love that. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thank Wonderful you so to meet you. Thank Lovely you so much. You. Ditto. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs.